Hi, I'm Lassie and I'm teaching people in metal shaping. I've done that for many years here. And uh, it has been a while since I put up a new video and uh, things have been sh a little strange the last year. And I hope everybody that watching this feels good after all that happened in the world. And um, it's time to, to catch up with everything and make a new video here now. This is going to be a video that is a two part video. And the thing that I'm going to show you is how to make a cab corner, make this lower piece on a cab corner for a 35-36 uh, Ford pickup. And I'm going to show you the steps with the layout, uh, how I cut out the panel, how much extra I added, and then I'm going to start roll it in the English wheel. Then I'm going to run this in the bead roller and continue and until we have it done. Uh, so I think this will be a good thing. We have many views on the last cab corner test piece that I did, but this will be a little different, a little more advanced piece to show you. In front of me here, I have a 33 Roadster that I built and because of the pandemic uh, 2020, I had the time or actually could take the time to build one 33 Roadster for myself. I built the whole body from from the firewall and the cowl, top of the cowl, doors and the back of the car, floor panels and everything. And I will say it's probably about three quarter done now, so I have a little more to do. The hood, I bought that from uh, Rootlib uh, in Turlock, California, and the quality is super. Nice people, I have been to their shop several times and the quality is very nice. I really recommend uh, Rootlib's hood. So if you need a hood for a 32 Ford or 33, 34 Ford and some other models too, Model A, uh, they have all that stuff. So let's uh, go over to the table and check the original piece that I made the templates from and then we can uh, continue with the video. So here is that old piece that I borrowed from a friend here in the Bay Area and uh, this is the piece that I'm going to make. Those many times those pieces are rusted out on those cabs so that's why I think it's a good video to make uh, so people can make those patch panels. I don't, I'm not sure if they are available I don't think nobody makes them so I think that's even even better. Um, so let's uh, take a look at this. So I laid this down and I'm going to show you the, the layout for this, how I did that. So I'm going to go into a close up now so you can really see what, what I did. So here we have a close up now. So hopefully you will see a little better what, what I do, uh, not just guessing. So hopefully my filming uh, will be a little better and better the more I do it. I'm using poster board that you can buy at Office Max or some of, some of the other office suppliers. So I decided how far up I wanted to go first. And then I put the paper over here and then I marked out the bead with my, my nail or with, with a pencil. So I know where the bead is going to start. And then I marked this edge as well. After that, then I take it off. And then I cut it after that line. And then I could pet it, put it back again like I did here. And then I can see what, what um, if it fits. If it's, that is correct, then, then I'm done. If I need to do little adjustments with the scissor, I can do that. The next step is to take a tape measure. And I can measure here how much that is. So that is, I measure that, so that will be, I'm going to use the uh, metric here because I'm, I'm not, I can do inch, but it, it's going to take way longer time to, for me to use the inch. So I, this is about 54 millimeter here. So it's a little more than two inches. The first part here. So this one is a little lower here. Then this go up in the corner here. This flange is a little less. So here I am using 45 millimeter there and 45 and 45, 45. And this one here, I can show you that a little later <clears throat> uh, how I go from here 
and it goes straight down and then straight out so it's to a corner. Uh, so I don't go adding in, in a curve like this. I want this to come down. So I cut out another paper that fits inside here. So I can see the inside radius there. That one I can do and I can use that for this mark here. When I cut this out in metal. So that is the next step there. Um, you can use just simple magnets to hold it or you can use earth magnets which is stronger. Uh, but every time I do something like this I do it with a paper layout first because that's, that's my starting point. Here you can see that this little, little, little long is because of the, the curve of the cab corner here is a little convex. But I'm not worried about that now because it's so little and then I can wheel that up later on after I made the bead here and I can roll this up a little bit and make that after the template later on. <clears throat> I did that on, on my first piece that I made. So I think that is the next step uh, to show you what the piece looks like when I cut it out in metal. So let's take a look at that. So I had a little bigger piece of sheet metal. I put the paper over that sheet metal and I lined it up with a straight line there. Then I take those magnets to hold the paper in place. So this sheet metal was a little bigger. I set this on 52 millimeter because I measure on the bead on the old piece that it was 54 millimeter. There. Not 52 if I said that. 54. And, and I scribed that there. So I scribed it to the paper and scribed it where I'm going to cut it. Here it was 45 millimeter. So I set that on 45 millimeter. And scribe it down to about there. Then I scribe this one 45 millimeter as well. Then you remember that I made this piece here, the paper there. I took that one and line it up after this 45 millimeter there, and line it up parallel with there. Then I could continue this line down here. And I scribe that, and then I could draw a straight line down here. So I got to a point because I don't want this radius to be out here. I want this to come to a more to a point, no radius. So that's what I had, and then I draw also a line with a sharpie here, so I know where I'm going to run the bead. So I can follow that line with the with the bead roller dies. I think that's what what I had, and this is the piece that I have to start with. Uh, and the first thing to start with on this one is to actually roll this curve to get this curve closed before I can do it in the bead roller. So the template that I have made is one template here. And this is about 20 millimeter wide uh, or three quarters fine. And then I use the stretcher and stretch the edge here until this strip was fit here. So I cut a straight strip in my shear and then I use the stretcher and stretch the edge until this template fits there. Then I have two templates for this. So I have one template here and another template, I think it was there. I marked it out on the, the new piece that I made, but I need to have two of those so I can see that the curve here on this one. So those three templates is, should be all that I need to make this. Uh, I think that's what I have just right now. So I, my first thing to start with, this is, this is the piece that I made already. So my first thing is to roll this here 
with a rubber band in the English wheel to get this curve at least very close. I'm going to roll up this convex shape a little more later on after I'm done with the bead here. Uh, so I'm going to roll this with a rubber band to get this template close there first. So when you have cut out a piece like this and you have everything looks good and you grind it so everything looks good to start with. The best is to punch a hole in this piece and that means that this is going to be your master. Especially if you're going to do left and right side, it's best to cut out left and right side at the same time and work with both of them parallel. And But also if you cut a, punch a hole in this and this will be your master, you can always cut out another one exactly after this piece. You don't need to do it with paper every time you cut it out. If you have this piece to, as a sample. And uh, it's so much easier for you to do another one. Uh, you never know. And it takes you a little time to cut out one extra from the beginning. Uh, so that's what I recommend. You can work so much faster. Even if it's a year from down the road from now. But you still have the template. So that's what I recommend. So to roll this radius here with the with with English wheel and the rubber band, the rubber band, when I apply that to the upper wheel and the English wheel, it's only bended two dimension and I want only two dimension there. Uh, I can go in and I need to know where to start roll it. So here I see that the curve starts. So I made some dots on this one like that then I can measure from this one and it's about 290 285 millimeter there and then I can mark out the flat piece and I got the dots on the same spot so I don't wheel it with a rubber band here in the area where I don't want it to wheel curve so now I can go in there and, and curve this part there that is the next step, but I would like to do one more step before I do the rubber band. And I would like to put just in little shape to the whole panel here because it is not flat. This part here is not flat either. So I will roll this a few passes over in the English wheel and the flat wheel first to get a little crown to it before I do the rubber band. So that's the next step. So I'm over here at the English wheel, one of them, I have five of them, so I have plenty of, of English wheel to choose from. This is the flattest wheel on the bottom and the top one is flat. So I'm going to roll a little curve into this first because it, it's, it's good to have a little start. So I don't rolling over the edges, I will stay away from the edges and keep the edges short so I can get a cr little crown to the whole panel. That will help me later on and it can be difficult to put that little shape in after I have the, the bead in the panel and have the curve in the panel. So. I think this will be enough when I get to to this edge, the upper edge here. So there I have a little curve to it both ways, this way and this way. 
So I think I can leave it that way now and then I can go over to the the English wheel with a rubber band and I can start rolling it this way to curve this ball part. So now I'm over to another English wheel with a rubber band on it and what the rubber band does, if you have watched my other videos, you know what's happened. And the lower wheel pushing up the sheet metal in the soft rubber and it only bends it two dimension. To solid wheels, it will be three dimension like a convex or concave shape. So now I'm going to roll this as good as I can with, with so I can get this shape there. Uh, I think what I would do, I think I to, will start with a second bottom wheel first. It has a little less crown to it, so it doesn't leave so many marks. <clears throat> And it's, it's very little in the, in the beginning here, so the second wheel will be a, a good choice. So you can already see now, I'm not bending it with my hands, it bends it with the rubber band. So you see the left side going down now because it's, it bends it. It's very, very good way to bend something two dimension only. I think the, the lower wheel now is maxed out, so I don't, I, I don't think I can go any further. Yeah, if I look under now, I can see that it's touching on both the whole surface of the lower wheel. So now I can't go further with this wheel. I need to switch the bottom wheel here with a little more crown so I can continue that. But you see that we have a very good start. So I just need a little bit more and it looks like the most is in this area here. So I think I'm going to go for a little less pressure now so I don't get too many marks. So you see how much more it curved now because I switched the lower wheel. So let's see where we, where we are. So you can see that the mark should be there. So you see that I, I rolled it actually too much here with a rubber band. It's too sharp there. So I can go to the bench and I can just bend it back a little bit or I can do it here on the English wheel too. So I can just bend it back a little bit there and then I can continue with a rubber band a little further up here see if I can match it better to the template this way so you can see now that it, it's closer but it's still a little too much there. So I need a little, little before and a little after. So it is a little, little back and forth like that, but I can bend it back to the C frame there. So I need to do a little less and sneak up on it. So now you can see that it, it's much, much closer there now. I need to do a little bit more up in this area. So 
so let's see where we are now so you see that I'm I am a little bit off but I can easily bend that back there so now you can see that for me that is close enough there now before I go to the bead roll and do the bead I can adjust those small things there now I can adjust that later on so let's set up the bead roller and uh, I think I think I'm going to do one more thing before the bead roller but I'm going to set up the bead roller and then we're going to do one more thing before that so on this little video clip here I'm going to show you what's important when you make something like this when you look at the radius here the curve here it's a different radius on this surface here than it is below here on the sheet metal so this is higher up that way where the bead is that means that I need to have more material on the bead here in this curve from from about here all the way down to about here I need to have more material on the bead if I run the bead on the new piece and and uh, just run it there where it after the line it will not be enough material here and I'm not going to get the right shape so when I did the other piece I went in and I stretched it with a deep stretch and I stretched it here this area after and then I clean it up with the bead roller again and then I stretched it more and then I cleaned it up with the bead roller dies again but I think I can help it a little bit now if I take this piece here and pre-stretch this area before I run it in the bead roller so that means that I'm going to lift this part up a little bit and then we run the bead and then I don't need to do so much stretching after I run the bead so let's go over to the stretcher and uh, do that so I'm over to the deep stretcher and what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to lift this up a little and you could actually see there immediately that I'm lifting the material up that means that I'm stretching it and that's where we need more material because the bead takes material when I stretching here this I need to be a little careful so I I'm, I'm consistent with the stretching so I, I'm making it even with the stretcher I go a little further to the edge now and stretching it I might go a little back and forth this is just a, a guess how much I need I probably need to go in there and do it again but at least I give it the start now and I, I hopefully I can do less after I run the bead so now I go over at light pressure and make it as smooth as I can There you can really really see that I was lifting the metal so 
So there you can see what it looks like. Uh, it is a little, little uneven, but that's okay. And the bead roller dies will smooth that out a little bit. So let's go over to the bead roller and uh, that will be the last part for this first part video. And then uh, we can continue with the second part. So I'm over to the bead roller here again. And uh, the dies that I've found out that have the profile that I'm looking for is the same dies as I'm using for the 33, 34 Ford. So that's what I set up. <clears throat> and I'm going to run it this way. So I actually, normally I have this on the bottom and the other one on the top, but in this case, I flipped them around. So I'm going to crank this one down all the way to there then i'm going to hold this up a little bit So this part here is probably okay, but I need to watch carefully and do small steps to follow the line. The tricky part is, is the sharp turn. So I do really small steps here. And turn it quick. Always pay attention to the area where it goes into the machine. So I think it, it actually came out really nice compared to the other one that I stretched after I run the bead. I learned and I am learned to stretch it before I put the bead in. So maybe I should run it one more time. I think this one is all the way down. Holding this up a little bit more. See if I can do that with the curve is as well. So that's the result we have there now. So now I need to go over to the bench and look at it and see what, what, what the profile looks like of, from the bead. Here you can see a little more from the dies in the bead roller. I could have made a little special dies without this um, flat part and get, get away with that. But I can also use the hammer and the dolly and, and fix that little bit there. That's not a big deal. So let's go over to the bench and see what, what it looks like for the template. So I haven't done any adjustments at all on this one. So if I put my templates over here now, you can see that we lost a little of that curve. So if I'm stretching it more here now, when I do that, I give it this more curve and this will bend more here too. So the, the thing to do now is to go over to the stretch and stretch it a little bit more. And then I need to run it one more time in the bead roller to clean it up again after the marks from the jaws. 
not just the teeth, but from the, the size of the, uh, the jaws, because this is curved, but the jaws for the stretcher is flat. So that's what I need to do now. So I'm over to the deep stretcher again. And you see that immediately when I did that, this one start curving more. Immediately when I lifted that up and stretched it here, you, you can see that it moved. And you can also see it on the curve here now that it's, it's way more closer to, uh, to uh, the, the template. I go over it with a light pressure where I stretched it a little heavy, so I get the the, 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 the marks a little more even. Here I'm going to lift it up a little bit more as well. So there you can see that we are much much closer there with the radius. So I think I'll leave it for now and then I will go over to the bead roller again and clean that up again with the dice in the bead roller before we can go to the next step. It can be a little tricky to go in the same spot with the bead roller again, but you know, pay attention and do the best you can. I think I'm through. So now I cleaned it up a little bit. It probably need a little bit with a hammer and a dolly and a little, little um, with a flap disc in the, in the angle grinder and smooth it out a little bit. But overall it's, it is close. So the next step for me to do now is to go over to the sandbag and the hammer and the dolly and fix this little mark here. I could probably do the English wheel with the flattest wheel and the shim and go over a little bit here, but when I get in the radius, I can't do it anyway. So I, I do it with a hammer and a dolly. So on this panel, I did little hammer and dolly work there and I'm using the sandbag as a working table. But I did a little hammer and dolly work there. You can still see some marks there, but the easiest way to get rid of that is to actually take the flap disc in the angle grinder, angle grinder and then smooth this out a little bit. It's so little, so that, that will take care of that. Uh, this is as smooth as I can now. I might need to do a little bit of hammer uh, and dolly work there. And I'll probably use the flap disc there as well and see if I have any high and low spots maybe need to go in and, and stretch a little bit more or flip it upside down and hammer the the low spots high spots on this side and ha hammer those down a little bit and do some small adjustments with a hammer and a dolly that's okay and then of course uh, i would like to check those templates and see how close we are with those uh, i also have those templates that i showed you before <clears throat> number two and number one here and you can see here now that we have a gap there on this one and we have a gap on that one as well so i know that this needs to be wheeled up but that will be in the next video in the next video i will also show you after i got this shape up in the english wheel that i'm going to cut uh, notch the corner out and bend this in and when I bend that in, I need to go in there and shrink it. 
and this part here I need to bend that too and and maybe do some small adjustments with the shrink and the stretcher there so we can create and have a look of a bead all the way on the bottom here so that's the next part there but we should be pretty close so that's uh, what I had for today about this video how to make a cab corner hope that's going to be useful for you and you learn something new today as well every day is a school day this year 2021 I have been in business for 30 years 30 years of progress learning metal shaping and understand how metal moves <laughs> it, it had been fun uh, uh, a wonderful part of my life and I really enjoyed to share my knowledge with you out there with 151 free metal shaping videos and over 12 million views here on my YouTube channel I have shared my knowledge with you so you could do the same thing as I do you don't need to be talent to do this you can just pay attention to do exactly the same thing as I do and you're going to get the same result that's it if you are one of those 12 million people that like my videos and learn from them and want me to continue to make more videos I need your support to spread my mental metal shaping technique to more people all over the world now it's the time to show friends and people who you learn from to support my free videos here on YouTube you can go to the link below or go to www.artvylassie.shop there you will find Lassie Metal Shaping merchandise. Anything from cool stickers to coffee mugs, tooth bags, garage prints, signs. It's really cool stuff. Here you can see the coffee mug. I, I bought them for myself because I, I love them myself. It's the same uh, print as on my t-shirt. Here you have a tote bag with the same print as on my t-shirts as well. My goal is to save my knowledge for future generations with many more videos here on YouTube. Even if I'm gone one day, the video will continue. I hope you agree that we should spread my metal shaping to more people, especially to the younger generations all over the world. Thank you for supporting and for watching. I'm looking forward to teach you more for many years ahead in metal shaping. See you on the next video.